So over on the NA version of the game, we're about to get the Summer 3 rerun, and I thought I'd do a little event guide for you, you know, talk about the banners that are coming out, talk about the free-to-play servant, you know, kind of talk about the event just a little bit, you know, give some tips and pointers here and there. Um, you know, a lot of you guys have been asking for me to do this, and I want to make sure I actually put this out before the event starts so you guys can kind of get in the right mindset and know what to expect when the event actually drops in about two days. Or I guess, I guess technically one day now, because it's the 11th as I'm recording this, but... Um, if you guys enjoy FGO content, I upload these videos every single day and all I ask for it in return is a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're feeling feisty, you can click that join button, you know, really help your boy out. But the like and subscribe is the most important part, you know, help your boy out and you get daily FGO content, you know, I think it's a fair trade. But anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this event. Now, the first thing that I need to mention and make sure that everywhere or every everyone is keenly aware of is the the points okay and what do i mean by points there are three point ladders in this event and they all go up to a million points so i'm not going to say this is the worst event known to mankind it's not nearly as bad as something like serif but it is definitely up there because of the amount of grinding you have to do to hit a million points on all of these banners like it is insane it's not like you're getting bad rewards like look you're getting qp there's you getting like a summoning ticket i mean I guess the summoning ticket is good, but you, they couldn't have thrown us like two or three summoning tickets per ladder, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you're getting some gold foes. The lore, I think, is going to be super important, especially if you're a newer player that just got into the game with the anniversary. And you're like, these lores are going to be super good to help you, like, max out some of those servant skills. So it's not like you're getting anything bad. The, the materials are fine as well, like the these the uh, the needles stingers i guess they're called stingers those i would say are more important because the like gears i guess some servants need those but maybe maybe i'm just suffering some from success and i have too many gears so i'm just like man i don't need gears but i, I guess there are some newer servants you'd be leveling up that need those i do recall that the banglets are very good especially if you manage to pull scotty in a few months that's going to be supremely useful in helping you level up her skills again roots Roots and horseshoes, like I know you need horseshoes for Medusa, I believe, and that's a servant I recommend all new players level up, so that could be useful there. The roots, not so much, I mean, I find myself having way too many roots that I know what to do with, but this is really good. The knight's medals and the magatamas, those are supremely good. The magatamas, not as much, I might be overhyping those, but the knight's medals, like veteran players know that knight medals are a pain in the butt because like all of the knights the round table need like 400 billion knight medals and you you could just never have too many of these okay make sure if you have to farm one of the ladders do this one <laughs> make sure you get those medals so you don't have to go to like i don't even know what the new farming note is right now i just remember farming the um oh the the camelot stage like 400 billion times to just try to get like my gawain and lancelot leveled up like it was an absolute pain um so yeah, make sure you start the event as soon as possible and you keep up with it. This is not something you can do last minute. Like the amount of times you need to farm these stages to like max out these point ladders right here, you feasibly do not actually have enough time to just brute force your way through it. There are there's some events that you could do in 24 hours if you literally stayed up all 24 hours and just grinded nonstop. This is not one of them. You're probably not going to make it, especially as a new player. Uh, for one, you probably need to sleep, but two, you need to get these CEs maxed out to help you get extra drops for all of these, and it's just not feasible to do last minute. Veteran players, you have a little bit of an easier time because you should already have these CEs from last year. Combined with the ones for this year, you might be able to max limit break one or two of them, and it's going to significantly help you out in your grinding. So veteran players, you have a little bit of an edge up on this event newer players good luck you're farming this one raw and i pray for you i hope you have enough apples dude because you're gonna be in for a brutal one now aside from that there's another good reason to farm this event there is a free-to-play servant that you get and that is jean alter berserker which i know it's it's jean alter everybody loves her i don't really need to sell you on summoning or not summoning but farming this servant but she's actually very very good i would actually put her pretty high up there on like the welfare servant tier list because she's just a single target buster berserker with a battery and that is just insanely useful right if you're a newer player and you need help farming like those weird nodes or just beating up like one really strong enemy 
Jean Alter Berserker, like this one is going to be so useful for that. Like if you have a farming node, which we're going to start getting here, uh, we're, we're not too far off to when we catch up to JP where they have these weird nodes where it's like one enemy, two enemies, and then one more enemy, or it's like two enemies, one enemy, two enemies. Like they try to like Scotty proof or Castoria proof a lot of these nodes to make it to where you can't just three turn farm. You got to start bringing weird team comps. And when it comes to these servants like this, servants like Jean Alter Berserker that can just obliterate those one like stage like beefy enemies because she's a free NP5 buster servant with a solid battery. You know, she's going to help you out in that farming, but she's super good in challenge quests as well. I bring her all the time to fight bosses because, you know, for one, huge John simp, right? Like I love regular John, John Alter, the Berserker version, John Archer. I love all of them, bro. Like total John simp over here. But aside from that, she's very good. She has decent survivability. Her damage is very good. She has a battery, not much more that you could ask for. Very, very useful, especially for newer players, because you're just going to get a basically a baby Kentucky almost. Uh, she almost functions as like a free to play version of Kentucky, you know, uh, a little bit less damage. I mean, well, maybe depending, you know, depending, right? Because Kentucky does do a lot of damage. Actually, we can check that right here to have this pulled open. Let's look at, so single, okay, Kentucky does 47K at NP1, Jean Alter, okay, it definitely, Kentucky definitely does not do as much, never mind. I was grossly overhyping Kentucky. Like, come on, he's one of the highest attacks in the game. You gotta forgive me for thinking that he'd still be able to compete, but basically a baby Kentucky. He still has a 50% battery, but just know that you kind of get that as a free to play server. And that kind of helps put in perspective uh, how good Jean is. Like, I mean, that should also be like, dude, she does big wham damage, right? So that's another main reason to farm the event. But let's also look at the summoning campaign because I know that's going to be a huge deal for a lot of people. They're going to be like, okay, this is nice ZTL. I got to farm the event. You know, I get Jean Alter Berserker. You know, that's all well and good. You know, you're telling me it's going to be a grind fest, but are the banners good? And yes, the banners are very good. Now, Ibaraki Lancer, she's okay. Don't really have a whole lot to say about her. She's almost just Berserker Ibaraki as a Lancer almost basically the same style of gameplay ushi assassin she i want to say that she's fine but she just like needs a buff or two right like she's just she's just missing something you know she's not quite there she's an aoe quick assassin so you would think right now that since we're in the scotty meta you think she'd be really good but she just she needs something man like i i'm sure if you're really determined you can get her to work but man like she just needs something to make her work a bit better but jean archer over here is probably one of the most valuable servants in the game and i know a lot of people are going to be like bro that's cap how can you say that let's let's come over here so the scotty meta or not scotty but the castoria meta is in effect on the jp version of the game so you know you want like you know, we want like solid AOE, you know, art servant. So what, what do we have for AOE arts archers? Okay, so we have Jean Archer. We have Helena, who's pretty poo poo stinky, if I do say so myself. And that's it, bro. And technically, technically in quotation marks, you can use Emia, right? If you, if you have Emia, but it's basically Jean, Emia, Helena, if you have Emia, which apparently after I did that Emia video, no. <laughs> Nobody has Emmy apparently, so that just makes Jean Archer even more valuable. But the whole point is that she's incredibly good now as like an arts looping archer. When Castoria comes out, she is dummy nuts. She is stupid crazy. She's so good. She has like a 40% battery. She has good survivability with like the two hits of invincibility. She's a decent arts buff. You know, she, dude, she drops stars on an arts NP. So if you're using her in like a challenge quest, you can even like kind of reliably start to get some crits with her. Or she gives herself arts or uh, star refund every single turn. She doesn't just star bomb, but she, she gives herself star refund. So like, she's pretty crazy. She's pretty nuts, but this is like the future proof banner, right? This is the banner you summon on if you want to like future proof your account and kind of get like a solid AOE uh, arts person. But Edmund Dantes is on the second banner. And I don't know if you guys know, we're in the Scotty meta. And who is like the best servant with Edmund Dantes? With Edmund Dantes. I guess I just spoiled it. It's Edmund Dantes. Edmund Dantes is 
absolutely insane with Scotty. Like, all the issues he had goes out the window and he literally just farms everything for free. There are people that are going to be summoning on this banner to try to get Dante's in preparation for Scotty coming out in a few months. And there are people that have Dante's that are going to be trying to get that glorious NP3 Dante's so they can quite literally farm everything in the game. Do keep in mind, if you're a player and you already have your Dante's and you're like, do I really need to summon for NP3? Uh, yes and no. You summon for NP3 to basically guarantee that you can farm whatever you want in the game and just ensure that you can always use the same setup. If you have like an NP1 or NP2 Dante's, there's no guarantee that he'll be able to farm everything the same way with certain waves and certain nodes being a bit too beefy for him sometimes. So do keep that in mind. You can you can try to supplement that by like gold foeing his attack or grailing him a little bit but it is just i mean for most people you're just going to want to go for the np3 if you you know have the quartz and you have the will power to you know put yourself through that so the banners for this event are also super crazy but really there, there's not a whole lot else to it aside from that the main thing really is the points get your john berserker and there are two very good banger banners to summon on if you want to summon on these uh, there's absolutely you know <laughs> There, there's uh, no slack from me. You know, you're not going to get any uh, negative comments from me. They're, they're both very solid banners to summon on, you know. Um, aside from that, there's like fun little Dojin quest over here where you get to like kind of see the Dojins that all the servants make. As, as a, like a lore event and like just for the story, it's super cute. If you want to just, you know, actually read it this time and not click that skip button, I highly advise it for this, you know, event. It's super cool. So... You know, aside from that, oh, there's also the event mechanic of the whole day-night cycle. That can be a bit jarring for some people. Um, basically, as you play events, it triggers a cycle in the day. So, like, it's morning, and then it goes to night when you finish the stage, and then it goes night to day two, like, so morning of day two. And so you go through the day-night cycles, and certain things are only available at certain uh, cycles during the day. There are walkthroughs on things like Game Press that literally walk through the entire event to make sure that you don't waste any time. And so you don't get into a position like I did the first time I farmed this on JP that I literally went two weeks of the in-game time trying to get to a specific quest and I kept missing it because I can't read Japanese, bro. So please do not get stuck on that. Be, be smart. Do not be afraid to look up a walkthrough or a guide to make sure you don't miss something and then get stuck in like an infinite loop for like, you know, three days of gameplay. So just be careful on that front. Um, I think aside from that, I've got everything pretty much important. Um, so yeah, I mentioned the points, free to play servant, banners, don't get stuck on the days. I think that's everything. If you enjoyed this video, like that, like, you know... <laughs> Sorry, it is it is 12, 16 in the morning. I'm, I'm trying to get this out. My internet's been down all day, but I was like, I've got to get this event guide out for the people. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm the daily guy. I got to make sure I get all this content out. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you need help, my Discord is linked down in the description. And if I'm not available to help you, there will be somebody in there to help you out. I mean, I, the, the amount of people that have joined in the discord and the little like fgo community we have going on in there is like super wholesome very helpful you know i really advise you to go join there if you need any help like if there's anything that like you feel like i didn't cover we can definitely talk it out and help you out in there but with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you guys have yourselves a nice day or nice night whenever you're watching this and i'm gone peace late guys